You're watching the Auction Network. Tell me more. You want to hear how it ends? Yeah. Really? You want to hear how it ends? Yeah. Okay, because there's a lot of toys at the end. It, it's This is it. With 12,000 toys, there's lots to see. So we've narrowed it down for nary a fee. From Star Wars to the Beatles to Lionel train sets, we're about to see some really good bets. But this this size Star Wars figure in the box, they should bring a few hundred dollars a piece. Anywhere from, I think I estimated them at 100 to 300 each. Okay, lot 149, 149. Darth Vader, 16 inch figure. My bid at $95, looking for 100. 95, looking for 100. Any advance, fair warning. We're gonna sell it for 95, the bid of 71. The Beatles, I'm told by many that I've underestimated them. Who knows what they're gonna sell for? Lot 250, Royal Dalton Beetle Mugs. Five and a quarter internet bid. Underestimated a bit by me, looking for 550. New bidder at 550. 575, 600. Six and a quarter, 650, the internet bid. Nine each, 675. At 650, looking for 675. Phone bid, 675. Randy's phone is six. Let me know when you're on the phone, guys, because I don't have it on my sheet. 675, looking for 700. Fair warning. Bidder number? 75. Thank you, Randy. Lionel trains are, are pretty much the premier collectible train in America. I mean, he became the standard for all train collecting. There are several other companies, Ives, American Flyer, Hafner, Marks, but Lionel was the most successful. He oh, they're fantastic, you know. Um, very collectible, and uh, every time I come to an auction, there's several people that probably know what they're looking for because the prices uh, uh, go rather high. 406, Lionel train lot. 130 bid, looking for 140. 130, looking for 140, fair 140, 150. 160, it's in the room, fair warning at 160. Bid at number 105 for 160. 408, Lionel train lot, $100 bid, looking for 110. 100 looking for 110, fair warning at 110. 20, now I need 30. Last call at 120. Sell it to bid a four for 120. Still more from the 50s. They've got a real beauty. The red hair Mike Kluye, his last name is Duty. Howdy Duty. Howdy Duty. That's right. Howdy Duty. Yeah, we have a single owner Howdy Duty collection it's from a very nice woman who grew up with Howdy Duty and uh, you know met, went out and went on a quest to collect everything she possibly could Howdy Duty related. Reaches a point in everybody's life when it's time to divest and get rid of things and. Yeah, I'm glad she chose us to do it. There's a big collection he's selling, I don't know if it's today or tomorrow, with Howdy Doody, uh, which we all grew up on, at least us aging baby boomers. And uh, uh, so there's a lot of memories, you know. It's, it's, it's great to come to the auction because you can buy yesterday. This is with the original shipping box, and this is for a kid's room. You know, this is a, la a light shade for a kid's room. How, how many of these are still around? Think about it, you know, kids grew up, the light shades got broken, the parents took them down when they got older. I mean, this isn't something that a grown person is gonna have in their room hanging over their bed anymore, but this is just a great, great piece. I'm a collector of uh, old toys, wind-ups, I'm about, I don't wanna give it my age, about 30 years, and I used to collect them when they were you know, like $25, and I have a lot of the, the tin wind-ups from the 1930s. I also love Howdy Doody. I tell you the truth, I've never seen such a great collection before. What I really re remember as a kid is the puppets. This is the Howdy Doody puppet. And then, of course, there's Clarabelle. I, me I remember Clarabelle. Hey, kids, it's Howdy Doody time. Lot 208 is a Howdy Doody clock -a doodle Very rare toy. My bid at 1600 Looking for 1650. 17, 1750, and the desk is out. 1750, Bill's phone. Looking for 1800 on the clock a doodle. You'll never find another one like this in this shape, guys. 
can almost bet that. 18 against you on the internet. 1850 Bill's phone. 1900. 1950 Bill's phone. Now I need 2000. At 1950 Bill's phone, looking for 2000. Fair warning at 1950. I think the reason why these toys last and why people still like them is that they meant something to all of us and they were, they were made well. You, know, you buy the best and you leave the rest is, is the right philosophy to have if you're doing it as an investment. Now, if you have just the right luck, you might take home Ben Casey, Roy Rogers, or Buck. You guys know who Buck Rogers is, huh? Buck Rogers was awesome. We're talking about these are the Daisy. Daisy made these, Buck Rogers. Uh, and these are in rough shape. They really are. I mean, they're not in great condition. Although, keep in mind, they're over 70 years old. These were done in the 30s. Uh, you know, they're pop guns. Steve Rathbone's collection is a very nice gentleman who collected toys and toy-related material, comic character, TV-related stuff, all the things he had when he was a kid or grew up with. And again, this is a perfect thing that kids played with back in the 50s. Got the stagecoach, you got all the little accessories. And there's people who just collect plastic toys. You know, there's different, you know, people want tin, people want plastic, people want celluloid. So you got celluloid collectors. This is a great toy for people who collect plastic toys. And the original box. You know, it's got a picture of Roy Rogers on it. So it's a, it's a double collectible. It's not just for toy collectors, people who collect Western stuff. For all the kids who want to play doctor like Ben Casey. I haven't opened this up yet, so we'll do this together. See, and there you go. Ooh, look at that. See, and this stuff hasn't even been taken out of the original packaging, which is very cool. Also hung by the chimney with care, rare wind-up toys. Do you think that you dare? Oh, it was wound up. Whoa, he knocked him out of the ring. Never misses. The Knicks could use him. I was looking at that pool table up there. Again, I think it's a little bit different. I've seen smaller ones, I've seen larger ones, but I haven't seen one that size before. Maybe when I was a kid, you went to Coney Island or something. It was a, you know, more of a perfect world when you're a kid than when you get older. So in essence, again, look at it. Look at the action, the color, all the, uh, lith the lithograph on there. I mean, look how nice it looks. I mean, what kid wouldn't like it? Maybe this is an opportunity to revisit your childhood. Let's take a close look at the detail, you know. Here's the entrance, and there's a ticket taker. And over there's two children. How old is that? Look at the shorts. What are they wearing, knickers or the short pants? And over here, the hot dogs and the kids with the little dog, orange aid. I mean, this is a time in America that passed. We don't see it anymore. The Great American Toy Sale was oodles of fun, but that's all the lots. It's all over and done. Oh, all right, well, hold on. The good thing is, you know, you had 1,800 people registered for internet bidding. You had probably two or 300 on my website bidding. I would guesstimate you probably had three, four, maybe more thousand bids altogether. So even with a small crowd, it proves that you don't have to have a big crowd to make a good auction. And I was happy. The toys have new homes and everything's right. Merry Christmas to all. And to all a good night. There you go. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays from the Phil Weiss Auctions. Merry Christmas. To register for future live auctions, go to auctionnetwork.com.